welcome to Plates Cutting Studio. So most records that get cut and made uh, as, a, as a vinyl record start off in a studio like this. Obviously once the recording has been made, they go to a cutting engineer, and this machine here is basically what cuts something called a master disc, and that's the first stage of the process of making a vinyl record. They're all original machines from when records first started getting made. They're quite temperamental machines, and unfortunately, as we found out today, um, I'm not going to be doing a demo for you because one of the parts which drives the motor uh, has decided to give up two days before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll talk you through a little bit what we've got in front of me and uh, how we would go from taking the music and getting it onto a disc. We just have a really clean and simple signal path really. So it goes from a sound card which is plugged into the computer into this thing. This is like a preamp for the cutter head which takes the actual audio signal. From this um, preamp, it goes from a cable out the back to the back of this box here. And this, this little piece here is really the gem of the machine, which is the cutter head itself. There's only two companies that actually manufacture these machines in the world. Uh, and that is Scully, which is this one, and then the other one is Neumann. I've got a bit of a hybrid mix of the Scully parts and the Neumann parts. So I basically spent the last few years finding people around the world who can create new kind of off-the-shelf parts that do the same job. This is the blank disc. It kind of looks and behaves pretty much the same as a vinyl record. Obviously, you can see it's, it's, it's clean, it's got nothing on it. Um, but they're slightly heavier, so they're made out of metal, and it's got coating on the outside. This is the platter, and obviously that's, that's the, the kind of thing that holds a disc, and it's obviously really important that it has a steady, powerful torque. The motor itself has to have a pitch computer, and this is not my friend at the moment, because this is the one that's uh, the reason we can't do anything today. But basically, the pitch computer determines the speed that that motor goes at. The speed that that motor goes at determines how far apart the grooves are. It's a really important thing, and you basically it's a trade-off of do you want a bass-heavy record, do you want a long record, where you can't have both. So everything comes down to really what this is doing. You can also use the scope to kind of just see how close the grooves are. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Can you see the music? <laughs> so the two, the two. Uh, oh, so the dot lines, is, the thick dot is the groove, yeah. Yeah, that's that's one and, groove. And then there's a lighter, and that's the that's just the the record. And then in the middle, you've got a thinner line. Yeah, yeah and that's that's the center of the groove. So you're, you're looking at three uh, or four different grooves there. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've got yeah. it. I've got it. Mad like tire tracks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sick. One of the other things that you know might surprise you that is just a really annoying, difficult thing to get right is. Um, <laughs> This big, this big vacuum here. <laughs> um, I thought it was normal range. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. I'm not even going to turn it on because it's so loud. It sounds like a plane taking off. That that uh, provides a suction, and then it pulls through from this pipe up here into a jar of water. And basically, this picks up the excess of, of when you're cutting the record. It picks it up every single time you come in here. There'll be a new thing to learn. I suppose you sort of. Um, develop and move with the times of yeah. the production and how it's been made as well. Absolutely, That's going to be a yeah. part in it. From from working in the analog studio to going to just working in the box. That's got to have a bit of an effect on how Absolutely, that would work yeah. too. So and a big thing is for me is like doing comparisons with music that's yeah, coming yeah, course, out. Yeah. You know, gets up in the studio. Right, I'm going to aim to get this sounding mm. how it does on a digital format. So mm. I'm trying to kind of just get people into the studio and do workshops and stuff. Um, I've kind of started with people around Nottingham, but it is something I want to do more of, you know, and not, you know, just, yeah, just get people interested about it. I mean, when we did it on the Circle of Light project before, like, people were really quite inspired by the fact they could get their music, like, real time, on a record. Yeah, it inspired me, so I know that it would do that for other people as well. No one's managed to, to improve on the process yet, so for the time being, this is still important, you know, and records are still very much a, a format for a lot of people now so yeah it's not going away anytime soon Too but much. it's great fun <laughs> not I, you than me but yeah, yeah I appreciate yeah. you man <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm, like I say I'm still learning and uh, yeah it's, it's a long process but I do love it so this is one of the things from last year <laughs> I've done this as a demo for a lot of people, so you can hear it's kind of worn a little bit. So, um, has anyone got any? Anyone got any other questions or anything that you want to know? Or? No, that was, man, that was really, 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 really insightful, man. <laughs> the pressing plant was absolutely amazing, to be honest. For someone that's been cutting dub plates, not recently, but over 20 years ago, is when I first cut dub plates, and I never knew 
probably hardly any of the stuff that I was showing today. So every day's a learning day, and yeah, big up Nick at Plate Records.